G'day everyone, Matt from Panda Garage here today. Got a big video for you. Uh, it's all part of our sort of big cleanup of the Jeep Compass today. What we're actually going to be carrying out is we're actually going to be changing over your front rotors today. So these actually got a bit of weight to them. Uh, never done this on the Compass before, but we're actually having a shuddering issue at the moment. Um, the brakes have sort of got a warp in them and they also grooved. So it's uh, time for them to go, time for these new ones to come in. Currently the car's sitting on just under 140,000 Ks. So uh, if you're around that sort of time you're feeling a shudder, it might be time to change these over. So today I'm gonna go through the process of how I do it. Um, I'm no, but I'm no means a mechanic. I'm just someone that likes to learn these kind of things and like to know how cars work. So, uh, join me today. You might get something out of it. You might just need to take your car to a mechanic, but uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, if you are willing to try it. So, join me here, Panda Garage. Let's get started. Before we get started, I just wanted to pay tribute to my 8mm socket that fell down that gap today. So, just a moment silence for the 8mm socket. Alright guys, I'll be transparent. This is the third time I've attempted to uh, do this little part of the video. Um, been getting the sockets wrong and a bunch of other, other issues. So, what we're going to do now, hopefully this is the last time we have to say this. Guys, so this part, we need an 18mm socket. There's two bolts here that connect the caliper to basically the suspension assembly. What we're going to do is we're going to suspend it with a piece of wire here. Just so it doesn't put any pressure on the rubber hose, you can use an Oki strap, you can use rope, you can use a uh, an old clothes hanger if you want to. So we just need to get this off uh, and up in the air. So we've got a bit of access for our for our new rotor to go in. So we'll undo this top bolt first. Pretty straightforward. So that, that's your bolt there. So we've got that one there. What we're going to do is we're going to bend our piece of metal just to prepare to hang it up. Just make sure you make sure it's a good little system. I need to give this a bit of love with a rubber mallet. Like that. Might have to bang it again. There we go. Probably shouldn't do that with a socket. Uh, probably should use a breaker bar, but hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And if it's your tools, then it's not a problem. We had a grass fire near our house last night. Not that it's going to be relevant to you guys because this video will probably come out well after I. Uh... So I'm not saying the, the day or what month it is because it's been a while since I filmed. Alright, we've got to get it over this lip. There we go. There's our brake caliper. It's quite a big girl. She's a bit thick. But that's alright. Oh, actually, better spot to go through would be the the actual metal loop. So we're just gonna hang her up here, so she's out of the way. She ain't going anywhere now. So as you can see, this is why you should wear gloves. Not that I'm um, the best at wearing gloves, because most of the time I do just get lazy. Now this 
from that road there, it should be just connected there, as you can see. It's a little bit rusty, so we're just going to go around. Just sort of see if we can loosen her up a bit. Might be a bit hard because the front's always a bit more interesting. And then the head of my mallet fell off. It's always good. That's why you should buy a better brand than whatever Bunnings has got on sale. So I know you probably shouldn't do this. So don't do what I do and have your legs under the car while you're rotating the wheel. I think we might need some penetrant for this just to break through the um, rust. So I'm going to quickly grab some WD-40 and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, we're back. And uh, pretty much what had to happen is I had to get really aggressive with the hammer. So I had to really hammer so right. I've used WD-40, a lot of people say you shouldn't. Um, we're gonna clean that off with brake parts cleaner later, so um, hopefully that's all right. But you just have to see, keep whacking it on the top here. Give it a, give it a bang between the as well. But mainly, and you've gotta be confident that you're changing this over. You gotta sort of whack it from the back front, back front. And you'll start to hear it loosen up. Starting to let go now. As you can see, we're starting to break it away from the center hub. It's sort of rusts itself on. There we go. Perfect. And that's it. That is our, well, we're now very more damaged than normal, but this actually had quite a bit of a groove and a bow in it. So we're gonna pop over there and we're gonna uh, spray our parts cleaner through here. Then we're going to uh, put our rotor on and actually spray that down as well. Um, just to make sure there's no contaminants on it. Then we're going to uh, put our brakes back on. Now I'm not changing the pads over this time around because we only changed them um, recently and they've still got quite a lot of life in them. Um, so what we're going to do is later on we're going to uh, do a decent brake test so we get it up to speed and then sort of slam your brakes on like you would when you put in brand new brake pads and it should smooth them out a bit. If it doesn't, then it's as simple as coming back in here again, taking the wheel off and uh, putting a new brake pad. So we'll uh, get our new rotor on, give this a bit of a clean up first, just to make sure we're uh, good to go. But it's looking like we should be all right. So a bit of a brake cleaner right here, brake and parts cleaner. Can't have enough of this stuff. Just feels like it melts everything off. It's fantastic. So we'll let that dry up a bit. Give it a bit, a quick little clean with our, with our cloth. Just get some of that old surface rust out of here. Actually, we might get a cleaner towel just to give it a bit of an extra wipe. So yeah, as you can see, it sort of exposed the middle bit. Get our freshy. Now, generally, brake rows will come with a sort of film on them. So that's why I'm sort of handling with the older gloves. See, that's going to sit nice and flush with our little thing. Now the problem is, because this isn't like welded on now, I need our little bowl of bolts. Just going to stick a bolt on the bottom for now. Um, I don't think that's going to go all the way down because usually you have a wheel in the way but I guess we're gonna find out there we go so I'll hold it all in place and as you can see that's quite a nicer look than this old shabby thing now it's as easy as doing it all in reverse actually what I'll do I'll spray this down first just to get that first layer of grime off Gotta make sure we conserve our spray too, because this is literally the last can of it left. Now I've got my nice clean cloth here. Just gotta go around gently. Just pick up any of that contamination that may be on there. Give it one more spray down. Like that. Now we just need to grab our rotor. We're just gonna pop her back on. 
Just making sure we're not wrecking this wire for later, because we will need it. Now, I'll try and line this up with the holes from yesteryear. This is the issue you may need to try and push back your caliper because it may be pushed out a little bit further. Yeah, definitely gonna have to fix our rotor up first. So I'll uh, tie this up for a second. I'm just gonna push back the rotor and then we'll continue on. Okay, so gonna put our bolts back in. Just to have to quickly, just sort of give it a quick little tidy up, just to make sure we weren't um, having clearance issues, which we kind of were. But it was as simple as pushing back the caliper a little bit to get that. Uh, just to get that brake pad sort of away and then uh, we just had to go through and uh, give it a quick little spray as well get a lot of the grit that was built up out of here too there we go not down too tight Might need a spanner in this part for a little bit, just because there is this bolt coming through. It's got to massage a bit. We've got to race against time here as well because we have a decent storm coming in today, and I'm half in, half out of the new Panda Garage. All right, so that is one rotor on. So we'll go around to the other side now and uh, we're going to do it all again so pretty straightforward as you can see let's quickly give that last bit more of a spray i might actually hold off the first spray till i've finished um just because i get my hands on everything pretty quickly so yeah that's that side that's pretty much what the other side is going to be like as well so i'm not going to bore you guys with doing the other side as well because it's pretty much the exact same um, so all you really need to do is just make sure you got your 18 mil socket, two bolts on the back, hang this up. So yeah, pretty much you've got to go through, give this a bit of a smack with the hammer on the top here, on the front, and then when you feel it start moving a bit back and forth on the actual caliper, um, you be absolutely confident that you can do this because you don't want to get halfway through bashing it with the hammer and realizing that you're not going to get this done because that is going to be a nightmare to drive on. So be confident um, that you know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, if, as you're seeing rust falling, as you can see on the ground here, uh, it, they just build up over time and it gets jammed in there and rusts them together. Just be patient um, and just slowly massage it out of there and you'll get it in no time. So pretty straightforward thing to do. Of course, if you're changing your brake pads, there's a, a uh, bolt up here. Just don't do that, swing this arm down. You can change out your pads, put in your uh, anti-squeal and all that. So that's all done. Okay guys, that is it for today. We only did the driver's side today because you're just basically mirroring the other side of the car. So if you've got any issues, just leave them down below or you can message me on Facebook or Instagram at the Panda Garage. Uh, we post other bits and pieces up there too. But if you like this video today, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have any other issues with Jeep compasses uh, and you've got a question, leave it down below and we'll try and make a video on it or at least try and help you out. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, until next time, guys, my name's Matt. This has been Panda Garage, and I'll see you all next time.